Well, good morning, everybody. Today, we're going into Canada with Minitini this time. We're going to Vancouver. We're gonna do some of the touristy things, some not so touristy. Then we're gonna drive the Sea to Sky Highway all the way to the ski resort town of Whistler. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV wherever I want to be. Cause I'm free in my RV. We're going to be RVing north of the border for the first time. The drive from Seattle is about three hours and apparently there are two ways to cross the border, I-5 or State Route 543. And the GPS seems to think the latter is a better option. This also seems to be the truck route. We are about to cross the border, so I'm gonna turn off the camera just in case. See you on the other side. We made it to Canada. I, I turned off all the cameras, just, you know, I didn't see any signs that said no cameras, but just in case, you know, you don't want to, these people don't have a, a sense of humor, generally speaking. So, they, you know, the interview took, what, five minutes or so. He asked me what I did for a living. And when you say YouTube, you, 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 that usually kind of sets, sets up a flag, you know, like, uh, but other than, you know, but it wasn't bad. And um, now I just have to get used to kilometers and we'll all be fine. So exciting to visit a new city and even though out of all the countries in the world Canada is perhaps the most similar to the United States, the subtle differences are part of the allure and uh, to be honest part of the reason we travel. We're gonna be staying at Capilano River RV Park, pretty centrally located. Yeah, Canadians are nice people. In any case, that was a pretty tight turn. This kind of reminds me of the RV park in Finland, in Helsinki, Rastila it was called, and it had a very similar entrance. Site 40, that's us. So let's park, and it happens to be Friday, so as soon as we set up, I'm going to do my weekly live stream, and then we'll go explore. By the way, greetings from the great land of Canada, coming to you today from Vancouver. This is it. Taking the Lions Gate Bridge, we're gonna head towards downtown. Gastown, to be exact, the touristy area. This forested area is called Stanley Park. It is a beautiful city, and I'm afraid our time here is going to be way too short. But we'll get a taste, figuratively and literally, as is usually the case. There's never enough time. I think this is it. Lots of people on the street. Let's see if we can park here. Apparently, it's only $3 after 6 p.m. This is Gas Town in Vancouver. We, we park there. Let's walk around a little bit. Very busy area and the site of the original settlement that eventually became Vancouver. The main tourist attraction here is this rare steam-powered clock. And we just missed the whistle. It is very cool. And we'll be back later, in about an hour, because right now, we have to eat. Yeah, we haven't had anything since... Actually, I forgot when was the last time we ate. We came to Steamworks Brewery. It seems nice. We're going to get something to eat, probably poutine and the local IPA. Yeah, we love poutine. And it is so ubiquitous north of the border. 
Well, that was satisfying. Let's walk around. Now, let's see if we can catch the clock in action. Well, that was really cool, actually. Ice cream, anyone? It's a lenticular sign. They have the most colorful mailboxes here in Canada. We've made it to Maple Tree Square, and I think this is as far as we're gonna go. So many places to eat and drink. I wish I had two stomachs. I'm gonna look for an ATM, get some local currency, just in case. Well, I got me some plastic Canadian money with a queen. This flying pig is supposed to be really famous too. Oh, Canada, maybe I can get a sticker. We're not gonna have time today, but I would love to go up the Vancouver Lookout, which is that tall tower there. They have a revolving restaurant. Let's go pick up the car and maybe visit a different area. English Bay Beach, perhaps? This whole neighborhood is called West End, and this is the Amazing Laughter by Yui Minjin from Beijing. And it is basically 14 cheerful sculptures of himself laughing. This guy's not laughing, just cheerfully eating. Moon? That's no moon. Oh wait, yes it is. It is not your typical sunset in the classic sense, but not bad, I'll take it. There's another beach over there and I think that's where Camper Khan took place. Lots of people here just hanging out. This is called Inukshuk, an ancient symbol of the Inuit people. Beautiful way to end our day here. Some of these places are happening here along the seawall. Really happening. Too happening, perhaps. I think we're gonna call it a night. morning it is saturday and this may have been a bad decision because instead of exploring vancouver with our limited time we've decided to drive north on the sea to sky highway towards the ski resort town of whistler it is supposed to be idyllic but for now we are stuck behind all these bicycles i know we're supposed to share the road but maybe they should do the same in return and let us pass just saying Anyway, we're gonna check the Point Atkinson Lighthouse. Let's go for a little hike. 
It is about a 15 minute walk or so to the lighthouse. 800 meters, which is what, like half a mile or so? Well, here's the end of our half mile trail. I guess it's up there. Point Atkinson Lighthouse here was built in 1914, replacing an earlier wooden structure. Very nice view here in between the trees. Well, this might actually be the better view. I wonder why the lens is still spinning around even when the light is not on. In any case, let's continue. Let's go back to the trailhead. Let's take a break. It has been a beautiful drive so far, I just wish it was a clear sunny day. It is usually prettier when you can see the tops of the mountains. The clouds do give it a certain eerie feel. There seems to be a campground. I don't know what's more fun, watching people backing up a trailer into a site or watching people at the boat ramp. I think both operations are equally entertaining. Let's stop once again to see the view. One of the main things to do here along this route is the Sea to Sky Gondola. Unfortunately, it is closed. Some kind of mechanical problem. Big bummer, I was looking forward to it. It looks like the sun wants to come out and we're getting kind of hungry, so let's get something to eat before going into town. We have Whistler Brewing here in the outskirts, and I knew there had to be at least one craft brewery in town. Cheers. Cheers. The food took forever, but it's finally here, and it's good. Well, they're really understaffed in there, but, uh, but it was good. Two hours later, we are finally going into town. Let's park here at the visitor center, get some information. Like, for example, Whistler here was a venue for the 2010 Vancouver Winter Olympics. And in winter, it's supposed to be lovely. Well, when in Canada, you do like the Canadians do and drink your teamies, right? We're gonna have to come back in winter someday, but for now, let's just walk around the center of town here, which seems like it is basically a shopping mall. A pretty one at that, but one nonetheless. There are the Olympic rings. What is this contraption here? Hmm, maybe I'm holding it wrong. Ooh, a revolving raised relief map. The rings, of course, commemorating the Winter Olympics. 
And they have a gondola. Yeah, we have to do that next time. Before we go, let's check out Green Lake here. It's really kind of greenish in color. Beautiful mountains all around. All right, let's put gas and go back to Vancouver. Per liter. Interesting thing about this gas station, you have to select how much money you want to put into the car before you pump gas. So I don't know how that works. I just put 20 bucks. It'll probably get us back to the US. Well, what did you think? For many years, I have heard about the mythical mountain town of Whistler. A friend of mine even wrote a song about it. So I always wanted to come here, and now I have. And don't get me wrong, the mountains are beautiful, and you know I love mountains. It is a nice town, but in hindsight, perhaps our day trip here may have been a mistake. I mean, the Cirrus Sky Gondola was closed, we haven't really had the greatest weather, we wasted two hours at that brewery for a beer and a gyro, and our time in Canada is so limited that I think perhaps it would have been put to better use by getting to know Vancouver a little more, a little better. We do have to drive back to Seattle tomorrow. Let's try to salvage the rest of the day and see as much as possible with the time we have left. Yes, I'm definitely going to regret not spending more time here in Vancouver this time around. It seems like such a fascinating and diverse city in every sense. So let's just wander around a little bit, maybe pass by some of the areas I've seen on YouTube. There seems to be a large urban camper community here in the city. I believe that gets a Lano pool somewhere down there. And this, I believe, is Spanish Banks Beach, where YouTuber JustIncredible.tv held a gathering called CamperCon, which he's done for several years in a row now. A gathering of campers and van dwellers, by the way. I think this guy was just taking a shower here. Very nice views of the city from Spanish Banks Beach. Yep, definitely lots of van dwellers and urban campers here in Vancouver. There's one more place we want to visit today and that is Grandville Island. This used to be an industrial area and nowadays it is a shopping district and we're gonna try to have some dinner here. Let's walk around a little bit, see if there's any place that calls our attention. This kind of looked like the Victoria water taxis. Kind of. Sort of. All right, let's go eat. There's a tap room here. Well, turns out the kitchen is closed already, so we're gonna try the steakhouse. It is called the keg. Not very busy considering it is a Saturday night, but the food is pretty good.
probably the tightest exit I've seen in an RV park. I wonder how a large toy hauler would do in this situation. The sights in there are not that large, but still. And it looks like at some point someone did not check their height. Well, leaving Vancouver and uh, going back to the USA today. And of course, if we didn't do much here in Vancouver, if you think about it. But mainly we just wanted the experience to take Minitini north of the border, see how it was. And now we're going to see the experience going back to the United States. And um, hopefully next year when we go to Alaska, we'll do this again and maybe spend more time in Vancouver and uh, see all the other things that we didn't see, which were many. probably the only American who puts gas right before crossing back into America where gas is much cheaper but I had some plastic Canadian uh, dollar bills you know to, to get rid of so I was also kind of running on fumes and um, probably not a good idea to run out of gas at the border crossing by the way what a gloomy day huh Canada must be crying because I'm leaving I kid, of course. Anyways, let's cross the border. See you on the other side. Well, eventually we made it back to Seattle. And what can I tell you? Not every episode turns out to be a grand, epic super production, but so is life, with its ups and its downs. On the next episode, we're going to visit Mount St. Helen National Volcanic Monument. Then we're going to drive the Columbia River Gorge. I'm going to visit a friend in Walla Walla and then Southern Idaho as we make our way towards Grand Teton and Yellowstone National Parks. Until next time, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. Riding, riding in